also uh, just to tell you that uh, Dr. Caesar is uh, the CEO of Sunny Money, a social enterprise in the renewable energy sector. Also the director of the Center for Personal Leadership, a visiting lecturer and leadership coach at the Strathmore Business School. And he's going to talk to us on the peculiar Kenyan habits. Caesar, you've got 10 minutes. If you may just walk to the lectern. Starting, starting now. Your camera is camera three, so talk directly to Kenyans. It's again a pleasure to be here uh, on this uh, very interesting topic. As you heard from the preamble, uh, Kenyans are a difficult lot to understand. But I'm going to speak uh, from my point of view, from where I operate from, which is really a business uh, point of view, business background, uh, where I've been for quite a number of years, and uh, talk about some of these peculiar habits. But in general, I'd just like to point out that um, I think there are many positive things with Kenyans. And if I mention uh, some negative things, please bear with me. Uh, because in general, overall, I think the average Kenyan is a very, very good person, somebody who I think uh, many visitors appreciate even when they come into this country. They, know, they generally say that Kenyans are very friendly, Kenyans are very sociable, and I think that is a very positive thing. But there are some things that I've noticed which I think perhaps I'd like to mention in this um, short presentation. And this is uh, one of the things that I've, I've noticed, and this is from a business perspective where I come from, is one, the short memory of Kenyans. See, uh, in the business landscape in this country, we've been very unfortunate to have uh, various scandals, especially in public companies. And uh, this is something that has been of huge concern to me, uh, to my colleagues, uh, also in the Kenya Private Sector Alliance. And we've been trying to somehow fix this situation uh, where we can reduce the scandals and have trustworthiness in business leadership. But Kenyans have a very short memory. In the last possibly a couple of years and in the more recent past, we've had a number of companies having huge problems in the banking sector, in the non-banking sector. But the, 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 the most recent ones were unfortunately in the banking sector. And um, huge losses have been suffered by Kenyans, where they've been locked out of their banks, uh, others where there have been huge destruction in the value of the price of shares, where a lot of Kenyans have invested. And these things happen, and Kenyans don't seem to have a memory for them. They seem to forget them. As a lecturer at the Strathmore Business School, we actually do case studies in other countries about uh, corporate scandals. And what you find is that the people who invest in companies there do not have a short memory. In fact, they want people to be held to account. But it seems in Kenya, there's this peculiar habit where things happen, there's huge destruction of value, there's huge loss of trust, there's huge uh, betrayal of trust. And we just forget. And we move on. And this then breeds a culture of uh, lack of accountability. And I go on to the second point about the peculiar habits we have. Unfortunately, a lot of these uh, situations arise because of what I call the MTTE mentality, which is my turn to eat. A peculiar habit in Kenya where people get positions and they assume it is now my turn to take advantage of my position. And in fact, having been a business leader myself, people find it strange that you are actually not taking advantage of your own position. So a peculiar habit, a peculiar thing, very peculiar to this country, is a position is an opportunity to take advantage for personal gain, as opposed to an opportunity to serve and to take care of other people's assets, whatever the case may be. And this is a very peculiar thing which I find here in Kenya, because I've actually looked at um, many other countries the situation and I think there are people who are out to serve and there is something called a chain of trust whereby when anybody is appointed to a position they are appointed there because those perhaps who own the assets don't have the time or do not uh, or there are too many to actually run that that organization so they appoint somebody to run it and this is a problem and a challenge for us Kenyans in terms of peculiar habits which is a negative habit and I said earlier there are some negative things I may comment and actually this is from my own observation and of course the second thing is that of course in Kenya we don't have any consequences for these kind of actions, so it goes on. The other peculiar habit I find is the peculiar habit of excessive consumption. And I think this is sometimes referred to as excessive greed, where you find that uh, people who are fairly reasonably well off, they want more and more and more. And you wonder, what is the more and more and more for? We pride ourselves, and this is peculiar to certain people, to having succeeded in life because we have made so much money. Peculiar habit. It's not always like that everywhere. It's peculiar. 
But it seems quite rampant. And of course, we've got to show off that we've made it. And so greed beyond comprehension is another peculiar habit which <laughs> I fail to understand. I, a friend of mine was telling me uh, the other day, he's an elderly man, and he was telling me, lunchtime, the most we can eat is probably two chapatis we are very hungry. And it doesn't matter how much money you have, you'll never be able to eat a bar of gold. That's an old man telling me. It's telling me it's strange. Why do people want so much, so much, so much at the expense of so many others? Peculiar habit for Kenyans, right? And then another interesting habit, which I have noticed. Again, a slightly related to this particular issue of excessive greed, and the end justifies the means, is we are so litigious. We run to the courts with all sorts of excuses. We go for constitutional references. Many of us, lay people, have become confused by our legal system because nobody seems to ever get convicted. This is peculiar to Kenya. I have seen cases even in the United States where business executives go to jail for business malfeasance. Yes, they're there. But in Kenya, no way. Court cases after court cases after court cases. We have so many still hang around the courts and so many complicated jargons being used the legal profession is probably the most active profession in this country, even when the economy is going down, because there are so many cases. Peculiar to Kenya. Litigation, all the time, litigation. And of course, Kenyans are very interesting. There is nobody who feels a sense of shame when these things are happening. And this is from where I come from. You should feel ashamed if you're doing the wrong thing, obviously, if you've betrayed trust. But in Kenya, no shame in betraying trust. Peculiar to Kenyans, especially a certain group of Kenyans, Perhaps we have risen up to certain leadership levels. And then, in Kenya, nobody does anything wrong. Peculiar habit. Nobody will admit any wrong because they have never been convicted in a court of law. And we are very conscious of the law in Kenya. We are very proud to say, no court has ever convicted me, so I have never done anything wrong. But the stories are swirling around, the rumors, the stories, and the evidence is right there in front of us. So interesting, eh? But nobody does any wrong. Because we've never been convicted. Again, very much related to what I've been talking about. And then another very interesting one, which I really <laughs> find it very peculiar. <laughs> and this is among a large majority of Kenyans, the ordinary Kenyans, who seem very ordinary. Is that they like handouts. Big man, give to the small man. Big woman, give to the small woman. Peculiar to Kenya. And every time that big man or big woman comes along, we are clapping and saying the big man is here in the big car and nowadays in the big helicopter. And we mill around the helicopter, we mill around the cars and we point our faces looking into the seats and looking at what's inside. When the big man comes out, we all want some handouts. You are here. Yes, you are here to help us. We need your help. My child has not gone to school. My wife is in hospital. She's about to give birth. We need handouts. And hence the justification of why People need to make money. Peculiar to Kenyans, the culture of handouts. And I think related to this culture of handouts, I was just thinking about it, and I, I realized, wow, we've become such gamblers. One of the biggest businesses in this country now is the betting game. People say it's legitimate business. I don't know if it's poverty that is driving us to this, but it's so peculiar that everybody wants to make an extra buck and do the least work to get that extra buck. Peculiar habit to Kenyans. Is it peculiar? It seems it's peculiar because everybody's now cashing in. And what is so interesting, if you just look at all these betting organizations, all of them are making good, good money from these peculiar habits of Kenyans. So they are making a lot of money from the peculiar habit they have noticed where Kenyans want to make a quick buck and they will sit on their phones sending answers, sending messages, sending guesses to somebody somewhere who will charge them for that so that they can make some extra money. Related to this, it's a betting game. Pyramid schemes always seem to succeed. Peculiar to Kenya. But I think it's also related to that mentality that where there's a good return, I have to be there. Peculiar habit of Kenyans. Whenever there's a good story, some good money to be made, let us get in there and do it. And who goes laughing all the way to the bank? The organizer of the pyramid scheme. I come up with my first peculiar habit. 
we forget about him after he's ripped us off or she has ripped us off. We've even forgotten so much that when they go into politics for elective office and they have so much money, we elect them. Pekidi to Kenya. I mean, this is one of the most interesting places to be in. There's always a soap opera going on. It's entertaining. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you, Dr. Sizomangi. Of course, uh, a raft of issues, excellent points he's raised regarding our habits here in the country, excessive consumption, or, you know, greed beyond c comprehension, right? can talk about the seven culture that even the Bretton Woods institutions have raised concern about our seven culture here in the country. That's why also we have Kerry uh, worried right now when it comes to revenue collections, right? Also, we are a nation where we are very want to go into courts with any, you know, slight or the slightest uh, provocation, right? And nobody does anything wrong in this country, right? You can see also that happening also with our institutions as well. Right up next we have Janet Omido. She is a CEO of Total Woman Gym and Day Spell Limited. Also Classy Concept uh, Limited owner and executive director, corporate trainer, events and conference organizer. She's a florist. She holds a Master of Business Administrations, or Administration I should say, uh, from uh, University of Phoenix, Bachelor of Science in Hotel, Restaurant and Tourism, University of New Orleans. You've got 10 minutes, starting now, Janet. Thanks, Duval. Good morning, Kenya. Good morning, everybody who's watching. Um, I'm excited to talk about this topic. I think it's way overdue. Thank you so much, Dibal, for introducing this topic to us today. Uh, there's so much we can talk about, but we have only 10 minutes that uh, we've been allocated to. I'll speak about things that I have personally encountered and things that I also maybe sometimes do. So standing here, I'm not judging anyone. And again, I will follow my uh, very able uh, panel member here. If I say anything to offend you, kindly forgive me. I'll talk about tribalism because that is something that um, is really eating at us right now. Tribalism has become a big, big deal in this country and it's eating us away. One of the biggest places I encounter tribalism, I'm sure most of you do also, is in offices, especially government offices and public offices, where you walk in an office and the first thing you, somebody looks at you is uh, such profiling. Uh, are you from this tribe or that tribe? And that will depend on what kind of uh, service you're going to get. I'm sure somebody already has profiled me by my last name being Omido. They figure she must be from Nyanza. Of course, you're wrong, but it doesn't matter. People should always be respected for who they are. Kenyans, we must appreciate one another for who we are. You get into an office, government office, and I'm sure you've all seen this, where you find people speaking in their vernacular, and they really do not care. And they'll speak it and go on at it and just, you know, and you're standing there waiting to be served. They don't care about it. And it's pretty much it's like, you know what, in office yet to and so you just wait until we get back to you. So, and also you'll find some of us also customers who want to be served going to those offices and looking for people who are of our tribe. We only want to be served if I'm a Kikuyu, look for a Kikuyu, if I'm a Luya, if I'm a Meru, Kalenjin, whatever you are, you look for somebody of your own tribe so that you feel that you know, you're comfortable with that person. Our leaders are friends. They are very good friends. We see them talking and laughing. The other day we saw Raila and Uhuru and all those big guys at State House laughing and talking and having cups of teas. The following day we were throwing words at each other. Kenyans, why don't we do that? We're very peculiar. We'll do, we cannot follow our leaders in one way but not follow them in another way. We need to be wholesome and appreciate and celebrate each other regardless of our tribes. Another thing I'd like to talk about is overlapping. Peculiar. We are so peculiar when it comes to overlapping. And for me, the overlapping that really gets to me are two groups of people, politicians and matatus. Can you believe I'm putting them in the same sentence? Politicians, why? You could be going to work, whatever time it is, a politician comes around with his sirens and chase cars and they're trying to push you off the road, sincerely. Why does this politician think they have a right to the road more than me, who is a taxpayer? And I think I pay more than they do. And I think I'm the boss. I elected you. So why are you trying to push me off the road? So it's very peculiar that the people we've, ha we've uh, voted in are trying to push us off the road, trying to get to work, whereby we're also going to work to pay taxes that's going to pay them. That's very peculiar. 
Ema tattoos, when I say tunenda kazi, what about us? We're also going to work. So the overlapping for me is very peculiar. And Kenyans, we become used to it that we just start copying what the others are doing. But we have to change our ways and pretty much do what is responsible, respecting one another and just being courteous on the roads. Mothers and fathers, we do have housekeepers at home. We value them so much because they do a lot of work for us. But most of us look down on these people. Our behavior is pe uh, uh, very peculiar in that some of us beat up our housekeepers. Some of us make sure our housekeepers have the last morsel of bread to eat. Some of us even make our housekeepers w sleep for two hours a day. And yet, it is these people who make you who you are. It's these people who stay at home with your valuable children and take care of your children. Then we lock up our bedrooms with our jewelry and stuff, but we leave our most valuable children with them. So what are we saying? Are our, our jewelries and stuff more valuable our, than our, our children? So when they come home and mistreat your kids and you're mistreating them, what really are you expecting? We need to leave that peculiar habit of looking down on people who we believe are not better than us. At the end of the day, in the eyes of God, that housekeeper and myself are all the same person. Me who is standing here today, a corporate woman, and my housekeeper at home are very much similar because we are both mothers. We want to be loved, we want to be taken care of. So we need to leave that strange habit, the peculiar habit of looking down on people because of who they are. Loose talk. We like to talk loosely Kenyans. We talk so much about each other. We talk about who is doing what, who is who, who got married to who. We are concerned about other people's issues, so much so that sometimes we invo involve children. You'll find a mother or a father out in the neighborhood. Find a little kid. Mtoto wa bari yako, ule mtu mnaishi nani baba yako? Na huyu ni dada yako? Na jana mama likuja sangapi? Baba likuja sangapi sincerely people. Stop it. Peculiar habits. Why are you involving our children in this kind of behavior? Mind your own business. Mulikula nini jana? Eh, na baba kasemaje. Then when you meet the mother, you ask her, Hule mtoto niliona nae? Kwani huyo baba yake ni ule ule pinda ule mwingine? Na ule washule? You know, let's stop it, Kenyans. Peculiar habits that just don't add any value. And women, we like to PhD each one of us. And what I mean by PhD? You see me, and the first thing you want to do is pull her down. That's what you do. Mara moja, our, our own enemies. I'm sure somebody out there who knows me, I'm a pigeta mungine simu arakaraka, umemona. And then, do you know what about this? You don't say anything good about people. We always like to say the negative, always coming at the forefront. I'd like to say so much more, but I've just been given a warning. I'm about to uh, step out. But before I do, I'll talk about church. Holier than thou. Those of us who go to church and be a hallelujah, our hands are up there in the air saying hallelujah and praising God. But yet we are the same ones, the first, first ones to gossip. Many people have turned churches to gossip social areas where we just go to, to do nothing. We don't pray. We pray a little bit, but we're going to also just show off. We'll show off what we have. We'll talk about our husbands, our children. Nothing to really build us up. And politicians have taken that also. Politicians go to churches as stomping grounds. The clergy and the believers welcome them because they're going to get money in their coffers. They don't care if these politicians are corrupt. We are so peculiar because we look aside when we want things that are going to benefit us. Church is a place where God meets man. We have to remember that, people. We are, I mean, that's where we are peculiar. Another third, the last thing I'd like to talk about is corruption. We are all so much corrupt. So corrupt, you and I. The police stops us. The first thing you think is, hey, ntampatia pesangapi so that I can get out of this bind. And that is what our fabric tells us. You know, we are told, ukilipa kitu kidogo utatoka. Schools, when my child fails, I'll get him to Alliance. I'll get him to those big schools if I have the money. Corruption. You go to hospital, you're back in the line. I'm going to get in front because I have some little tombs to get me up there. Offices too. I'll get a position even if I'm not educated because I have money. Corruption starts with us at home too, parents. We even bribe our kids when they're still so young. If you do well in school, I will give you ABCD. If you pass your grades, I'll do ABCD. That is corruption, my friends. Let us stop the peculiar uh, habit of saying Kenyans are corrupt, yet it starts with you and me. So I'd like to continue. Maybe Idiba will give another five, two minutes later. But for now, let us all stop the peculiar habits that we have. You and I. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Right, uh, Mr. Politician, uh, today, right, if you may just avoid overlapping together with the uh, matatus or cup crawling, 
right? That is another peculiar habit that uh, Janet, she's mentioning here. Also, the way you treat your housekeepers, right? Uh, loose talks, we gossipers, PhD, as she puts it, right? Pulling other women or other, yeah, other ladies down, right? Don't pull her down, right? When you go to church, is it a place to worship and revere the Lord? Or is a place where we get to gossip and, you know, to catch up? So we shall be talking about all these pet peeves. Remember, you can hit us on Twitter, right? We're talking about all these peculiar habits. Our Twitter handle is AMLiveNTV. And we are asking you this morning uh, this particular question, right? What are some of the peculiar habits that we Kenyans do have that you know, that you can mention them, right? Do you mind dropping them on our Twitter handle, which is AMLiveNTV, and also our Facebook Profile name is AM Live and TV and 20505, our SMS portal. We shall be sampling some of the reads much, much later in the course of the program. Up next, we have Simon Bevy. He's an author, an executive, uh, also an executive director of Transform Nations. He's an author of several books on issues masculinity and leadership. His organization, Transform Nations, runs programs addressing masculinity challenges at various ages. Some of their programs include Man Enough for Adults and Boys to Men High School Mentorship Program. Someone is a lawyer by training, and in addition, he holds a master's degree in leadership. He is a sought after speaker locally and internationally on issues masculinity and leadership. Someone, you've got uh, 10 minutes starting now. Thank you, Dibao. Uh, it's good to be here, and good morning, Kenya. As I talk about these peculiar habits, um, I see them in me. I see them around me all the time. And a lot has been said. And uh, I will just add five, around five C's that I like to talk about. Number one is um, the lack of caring, uh, not being caring towards others or towards each other. I find this strange that we're actually very caring people in some aspects. Uh, you will find that people could stop and help you carry a heavy load or something like that. Uh, or you could go to your neighbor and get some salt, uh, you know, it's still in some communities, and really get helped. But then we go to traffic, and you see someone being robbed, and Kenyans just stand and watch. And maybe say a prayer that God may help that person, but no one is coming across to help. I was very shocked. Uh, recently, I found an accident somewhere. The victims were still in the car. They were wounded. Some were crying out. And I found quite a number of people just sitting, uh, standing there, watching, you know, discussing how the accident happened. It was like a video. You know, you would be familiar to that. A and, and they're talking about it, but people are crying inside. And only a few of us uh, got inside and began to pull these people out and take care of them. Uh, I believe we have a heart that, you know, as Kenyans, uh, would care for one another. But it's surprising how many times we don't just, we just stand by, we watch, and we don't reach out to help. Someone being bullied, you know, I found a little boy being bullied by another uh, big boy, uh, and people just watch. They're not saying anything. They know it's wrong. Someone needs to step in and help, but no one uh, wants to get involved. We need to be caring enough to do something about the situations. Uh, number two, uh, it's the area of competence. Kenyans are hardworking, you know, uh, they, they work hard. At four in the morning, I'm driving, uh, you know, to town, and I see people carrying heavy loads and going to work. Uh, but then uh, I wonder sometimes when I go to an office and people are talking to each other and I need a service, uh, and they're laughing about it. I mean, I'm there, I, I'm not invisible, and I'm waiting to be served, but they're busy doing their own things. They don't just have a catch of, let's help you, let's get the job done. City council workers, you know. Um, you find them just uh, getting dirt out of a trench, you know, trying to clear drainage, and then they put it just next to the drainage. And you know that with slight provocation of rain or something else, it's all going to go back. And you wonder, uh, why can't we just have uh, this competent attitude, competence attitude, that I want to do a job and do it well? What about people taking, you know, saying, you know, calling in and saying, I have a flu this morning, I'll not come to work. 
You know, it's like we look for every little excuse not to work, not to put in some time uh, in terms of our commitment to work. Or oh, there's no electricity, I'm not going to be there. My cousin's cousin's fr uh, friend has a funeral and I need to go. And they're just looking for a way out, not to come to work. We still have a bad attitude towards work. Uh, idle people on the streets uh, or in the markets, uh, in the villages. They're just standing there talking about politics uh, all day, not putting in some effort, not working. Uh, some very working, hardworking Kenyans, others who look for opportunities not to work. What about character, dishonesty? Kenyans will lie to you, to, the, to your face. Uh, as in a matatu once, and someone uh, called, uh, got a call. And the other, uh, on the other side, I think the person was asking, are you in town yet? Uh, and this person said, eh, Nimefika town. <laughs> At that time, we were out in Lolongo. Uh, and I wondered, why can't you just say the truth? And of course, a lot of people laughed in the matatu because they saw themselves. This was a mirror. A lot of times, we don't say the truth. We say, oh, I was held up in traffic, really, and there was no traffic just dishonesty that eventually gets into corruption. That's how we get dishonest about money, uh, about relationships and things like that. And we get to hurt each other because of not telling the truth. What about lost items that never get back to the owner? Uh, what about uh, things like uh, putting some water, diluting milk so that we sell and get some more? Uh, once I was buying you know, this bucket of uh, potatoes uh, and, I, and, and I paid for it and this person took uh, a sack and poured uh, you know, the potatoes into it. Uh, and then I noticed, I looked at the bucket, I looked at what I got, it wasn't uh, commensurate. Uh, and I said, wait a minute, let me see. And I looked into the bucket and it was stuffed quarter away with papers. And I said, why do you do this? And he said, everyone does that. Uh, I've had you know, such kind of incidents two, three times. And I began to talk to him and say, why don't you just tell me this bucket costs this much instead of trying to lie to me? So just uh, not being honest. A fourth one would be lack of compelling vision. Uh, it seems like we know what we want as a country, but the kind of leaders we elect, you just wonder, do we know what picture we want of the kind of a Kenya uh, that we dream about? What about even in, uh, in personal terms, as a person? Do you have a picture of what you want? Then why do we compromise so easily on that picture by allowing people who have no clue how to get us to where we, we need to go uh, to be our leaders? I want to end with this one, conciliatory. Lack of the ability just to build a bridge and reach out to the person on the other side. I mean, several uh, social media groupings. Uh, and it's interesting how, you know, pretty quickly, within two, three uh, minutes, a conversation, good conversation, talk about some issues in the nation could just deteriorate to me against you, us against you guys. And we begin to call each other names and someone has to mediate and come in and say, no, we can't do this. And these are educated people, these are honorable people, uh, but the way we just quickly begin to say, uh, to have conflict, unnecessary conflict, not healthy conflict that gets something uh, out of it. I think we need to be Kenyans who look at these habits and say, can we be better than this? Uh, I think some of these things are expressed in various ways in other nations, but could we be more caring for each other to get involved? Could we be more competent and put in our effort to know that we'll get the Kenya that we build? What about character? Could we begin to have more uh, financial, moral, and relational character? Someone telling you, I'll see you tomorrow, and they know they're going to be out of town. Could we be people who keep their word? Once you give your word, you keep it. Could we have a clear vision and picture about ourselves, our families, our nation, and therefore know who to work with uh, together? And lastly, could we be people who reach out to each other and say, for the greater good, let's hold hands and get what we need together? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Simon Bibi there. Uh, very, very interesting uh, speech that you've given us, uh, giving us also the five Cs. Uh, just if you may run through that particular grid, do you think you pass master? Right? Do you think you have that character? Do you think that you're competent enough? Right? Are we conciliatory as a nation uh, we, when we have also uh, the lack of caring aspect right, in 
the public domain, when you see someone is being bullied, you don't do anything about it. How much do you care? Thank you very much, Simon. Right, up next we have Mudoni. She's the regional director of Amnesty International East Africa, the Horn and the Great Lakes. She has worked previously as executive director of both the Kenya Human Rights Commission and the African Women's Development and Communications Network. She is a, a PhD candidate in politics and international studies with the School of Oriental and African Studies in London. And she has also, she's doing her doctoral research focusing on the African Union and the notion of African solutions for African problems. Well, then you've got 10 minutes. Let me just also reset my, my clock here, starting now. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I should say that these are not my own views. I canvassed my colleagues in the office yesterday and colleagues outside of the office. And it was surprising how fast and furious the answers came in. So I've got about six sets of peculiar habits. And the first one has to do with Kenyans loving the news. Um, I remember years ago being in Bondo and sort of watching this group of men with, um, you know, really some amazement. There was one newspaper between them. I think one of the school teachers in the group had brought it. Of course, they were all men. Women were running around cooking. Um, but each and every story was read, was discussed. They moved on. It was like a good two-hour, three-hour procedure. And I think in any sort of house that does have a television or bar that has a television, nine o'clock comes, it doesn't matter what's on, news gets switched on. We know every fact there is on corruption and human rights violations in this country, and a few more besides. We also like to elaborate um, from second, third, fourth-hand sources. Um, but news is essentially seen as a kind of a soap opera, a telenovela. It doesn't actually translate to action. We're informed, um, but we don't do anything about it. And I think I'm sort of wondering why that is. Is it that we have an attention deficit? Is it that there are just too many dramas to follow in the country that we can't pay attention and sort of hold on to one to do something about it? Is it that we have a lack of platforms to act on the news because often it's um, pretty depressing? Or is it that we sort of individually, collectively feel powerless and sort of the games that politicians do, we don't take as being games that have anything to do with us? My second sort of point, we pay an awful lot of tax, an awful lot of tax, but we don't really seem to care um, where the money goes or we're able to do anything about it. Um, if you look, I mean, returning to the conversation that we had briefly on the budget earlier, the KRA, we have to say, has done a great job on the collection side. And until Kenya went off on this massive borrowing um, spree um, in the last two years or so, we were re nearly self-sufficient in terms of being able to raise recurrent expenditure of the government pretty much from tax. Um, the problem is, so the KRA works. Um, our long-suffering and beleaguered Auditor General who also works on the accounting side. We know the facts about where uh, the money has gone. Uh, just this week, I think we're talking about 1.8 billion gone from NYS. And I think those of you who read The Economist saw the story this week um, that in terms of the debt that we've incurred for the standard gauge railway, we could have spent 16 billion. Instead, we've borrowed over 300 billion. Um, and that's debt that will come from us. So the peculiar habit here is we know all this. It's not like in Kenya that, that any of these things are actually hidden. Um, but we either don't care where the money is or are outraged at each corruption and scandal. We're just unable to sustain it in a way to do anything about it. Is it that somehow we too play into the idea that once tax is extracted from us, it somehow is a question of sort of money coming from trees and we don't see it as actually belonging to us um, now or in the future? Is it again the question that we don't have platforms to act on this and to consistently follow up on how much money is stolen from us? Is it our complete inability to hold parliament and the executive to account? Again, do we just feel powerless? My third sort of set of 
or a third peculiar habit related to the one that I've just talked about, we know, we all know that most public personalities, especially civil servants, senior civil servants, especially politicians, and that whole range, new breed of Kenyans called entrepreneurs, are living large off our pocket. That is our money, that is our cash, that is our tax money. That missing tax or that debt that is sort of growing, growing by the day, looming larger over our head. And yet, we worship the wealthy and we expect conspicuous displays of consumption. It has confounded me, or it confounded me, when I realized Kamlesh Patney's church had a congregation. I watched instead of shock and horror, I was like, who are those people? <laughs> Why are they there? I mean, it's crazy. And we have to ask ourselves, how is it that suspected drug dealers, suspected murderers, and other suspected criminals ended up in parliament? It's completely shocking. How can a recent poll find that most young Kenyans believe it's necessary to become wealthy and to become wealthy, you can do anything that you need to do to get there. Get wealthy by any means necessary. I think, again, in terms of trying to understand it, is it that we've become so acculturated to the complete lack of consequence for bad behavior, the lack of individual personal accountability, the lack of criminal accountability, that we've all sort of thrown our hands in the air and sort of said, if you can't beat them, join them. Again, or is it again a sort of symptom of powerlessness? My fourth peculiar habit, Kenyans are actually quite pleasant as individuals one-on-one, -on -one, but we turn into monsters when we can be anonymous or when we are in groups. And, you know, I think other people on the panel have spoken about this. There's not one of us, one-on-one, -on -one, who wouldn't say, oh, you know, negative ethnicity is very, very bad. Um, but then you go online and you look at the absolutely shocking language, the tossing around of ethnic stereotypes and resentments, the kind of deep venom and anger that people express, or on the streets, you know, ordinary people walking around, some poor guy is caught stealing a purse, and, you know, he can end up dead, mob justice. And, you know, where does this come from? Where does this sort of ethnic sort of hate men, hatred, this sort of, because I, I really feel that it's worse for my generation and younger generations. It's worse among the educated. It's worse among the diaspora than it is or than those attitudes were in my parents' generation among the less ed educated and those who've always been in Kenya all their lives. It's, it's a paradox, actually, that we expect that, you know, over time we're meant to get a bit better as a society, and I feel really as a society we're retrogressing. Um, and where does this sort of transformation from a pleasant individual to a monster come from? Is it that we lack sort of msimamo individually and so feel very unable to challenge anything um, as individuals and sort of the only way we can express how mad we are is when, you know, we find comfort in numbers? Again, I think it's another expression of powerlessness. Finally, or not finally, um, then there's a whole other set of random peculiar ad, um, habits. First of all, the Meshimiwa syndrome, when honorable is actually a term that's only meant to be used in parliament when parliamentarians are addressing one another, or if we're using it outside parliament when we're actually referring to honorable behavior. Um, to quote John Githongo, we're prayerful thieves and hypocritical about it. So we follow the Constitution when it's convenient. Uh, for instance, you know, the jubilants are insisting now we must follow the Constitution with respect to the IBC. But we feel absolutely free to make unconstitutional laws and directives when it's not convenient. Um, for instance, these orders, all these completely unconstitutional orders being issued left, right, and center by the Ministry of Internal Security. So, and then we go to church or the mosque, not to repent for our bad behavior, but to actually justify the same in sort of speeches in a place that's meant to be people thinking about, you know, their direction in life and sort of higher powers and so on. Another peculiar habit, quote unquote, 
accept and move on. We have complete collective amnesia when we don't know what to do with a really bad situation and we when we want just to get on with our little powerless lives. Um, another peculiar habit. We are one. I'm sure you've all seen that Twitter, Twitter hashtag. We are one. But we're one only when we're watching long distance running. Otherwise, we'll speak our own language, even when other people are around. No one can sustain a decent conversation in Swahili, including me. Um, we're horrible that way. Um, and then finally, the sort of belligerence that ha um, has grown, I think, in the public domain recently, the sort of attitude of mtadu. Um, we all hate corruption, except when we're begging for personal favors. But nobody, nobody expects consequences, and they throw that lack of expectation of consequence into our faces. To conclude, on a more positive note, I think Kenyans work really, really, really hard. Um, and some of that is positive. I think, you know, we all know about the side hustle, right? So those of us who are fortunate enough to have jobs, um, you know, they'll tell you what their sort of job is, and then I'm in business, or I'm a farmer. Everyone I know has a business or is farming. Um, and I think that's great. I mean, I think it shows a sort of spirit of survival among Kenyans. Most of us do work really hard because everything is privatized and nobody has any expectation at all that the state will give us back any of those taxes in form of public services. And last, we can laugh at it all. Kenyans do have a very satirical side. Um, we love Gado, we love XYZ. Um, Kenyans on Twitter, Baba While You Were Away, Kidero Grass, all of those things, I think it shows we survive also through laughter. Much Mudoni um, Wenyiki there. Of course, uh, we shall be discussing this uh, the Moshimiwa syndrome, which is very rampant in this country. Uh, yeah, quoting Kidongo there, we are, are prayerful, we are prayerful thieves and hypocritical about it. We do follow the constitution when it is convenient for us, or is, is convenient for us, I should say, right? We are one only when we have the long distance uh, running and the marathon and uh, the athletes and uh, Mutadu and the raft of other issues.